Now meet the anti-Carson block. Instead of looking for fraud in Chinese companies and selling those stocks short, Kevin Pollack calls himself a China bull. He's managing director at Paragon Capital, an investment firm that is focused on China and based here in New York City. Kevin, welcome to the Inside Track. Carson Block, in the space of a month, has single-handedly changed the way that many investors look at Chinese stocks. Is that necessarily a bad thing? There are times when Carson Block has added value to the space, but overall, my gripe is that Carson Block and other short sellers like him have led investors to believe that all Chinese companies are frauds, and that's definitely not the case. And I hope that regulators step up, take action to hold these firms accountable if they make statements and allegations that end up being false. But you know what, Eric? There's two pieces of good news out of all of this. Number one, right now, stocks are at ridiculously low valuations because of short sellers like Carson Block, and it's a tremendous buying opportunity. Private equity firms like Morgan Stanley and Bain have stepped up and, and made those investments. And number two, Carson Block took a big hit to his reputation this past week. I don't know if you followed the story. Spread trim, spread trim. I'm yeah. sure you have, but the issue with spread trim was it probably wasn't the best target for him to go after, and clearly the stock has rebounded significantly. He didn't go after it the same way, though, that he did on Sinoforce. He didn't write a detailed research report. He just sent an open letter to the chairman of the board raising some concerns and saying, hey, I've taken a short position. That's right, but at the same time, the quality of the research wasn't that strong. It's really interesting because Carson Block was an unknown a year and a half ago. Suddenly, Even he's a month ago. Yeah, he's rocketed to fame overnight because of his Sino Forest short and possibly losing hundreds of millions, hundreds of, millions of dollars. I have, I have a couple of key questions I need to ask okay. you on that front, though. One is this. I have talked to Carson Block. You've read much of what he's had to say. He has not made any blanket statements about all Chinese companies being frauds. So... Don't you think it's a little unfair to accuse him of that? There may be other people who feel that. I don't think Carson Block has said that. Carson Block hasn't specifically said that, but the impression that these short sellers have left investors is that there are serious issues with Chinese companies and that investors should stay, the, stay away. And I disagree completely. I think there's some tremendous investment opportunities, and these Chinese companies are taking proactive steps. Spreadtrum did a great job addressing the allegations that Carson Block made and have done uh, proactive steps such as declaring a dividend, having a share repurchase program, mm -hmm. and taking other action to rebuild investor confidence. Now, That's how critical. about the point that you made on holding short sellers like Carson Block accountable for things that they've said that may be wrong? There is still, look, it's an open market for information. Securities regulators don't punish analysts who were long. The, think of all the analysts who put a buy on a stock and keep the buy there until the stock goes to zero. Did the securities regulators go after them? Unfortunately, that hasn't been the case. But here it's been really uh, abusive, I think, in some cases. And if you read some of these research reports, the information clearly is inaccurate and misrepresentative. And I think it's not fair to Chinese companies that are being punished and having their valuations beat down because of this. Okay, well, anyone who takes a close look at this quickly realizes that the questions are being raised about specific kinds of companies, companies that have participated in reverse mergers, gone public on North American markets, but not through an IPO, doing a merger with a shell company, or they've been participants in pipes transactions, right? Private investments in public equity. And those have drawn a lot of scrutiny over the past couple of years because they can be highly dilutive to existing shareholders. Your company has participated in these kinds of deals. So I want you to defend the practice, I want you to say right here, right now, why looking at it this way, uh, why, why doing business with companies in this fashion isn't necessarily a bad thing. Sure, Eric. The big investment banks are going to focus on the biggest Chinese companies to raise capital for. And there's a huge number of small but very promising, profitable Chinese companies can't, that can't access the capital markets in China. It's a long process. They want that public status in the United States. There are a lot of benefits that come with that. You can raise capital easily, get a nice valuation, uh, use stock options as incentives for employees. So there's nothing wrong with the process. In fact, a lot of companies have uh, been people public. say not enough due diligence is being done. Well, and that's why there's an opportunity for people like Carson Block. It's very important to do due diligence on these companies. I spend a lot of time in China. I meet with the companies. I talk to people in their inner, inner circle to make sure that I know that I'm comfortable with these companies. And a lot of investors don't do the diligence, don't know the red flags to look for and the positive indicators to look for. And that's certainly a key component of investing. But the process itself has no issues with it because there's been frauds in the United States. There's been frauds in Hong Kong. So there's nothing particularly bad about U.S. listed Chinese companies having a market in the United States. And I think you're going to see a rebound in stock prices as people start to recognize that a lot of the short sellers have very little ammunition and that the valuations are ridiculously low and that private equity firms are starting to step up and buy companies at a premium. Well, there's a reason that everybody's so interested in China because of the potential there. Kevin, great of you to join us here on the Thanks Inside Track. Me. Kevin Pollack, 